Now that we've done some scaling, uh, we're going to hone in on a particular non-dimensional number, uh, the, the Nusselt number, uh, that's really useful when we want to solve uh, a convection problem. So what is the Nusselt number? Well, it's, it's a number that tells us about how strong convection is uh, in a particular flow, uh, and in particular in flows that are uh, internal flows, flows through a pipe or a duct, uh, or external flows where we're, we have uh, air or water or some fluid flowing over a sphere or a cylinder or a flat plate. Okay, where do they come from? Well, they come from, uh, some come from scaling analysis. So um, actual analytical analysis, particularly of laminar flow, uh, has produced some, some of these Nusselt numbers and Nusselt relationships. Uh, a lot of them, though, come from experimental results. Um, and so when things get complicated, when we get turbulent flow, a lot of times we're just looking uh, at a bunch of experimental low, uh, results and trying to fit a curve um, to those experimental results. Um, and what both of those uh, processes, scaling and uh, experimental results, show is that the Nusselt number is uh, a function of the Reynolds number and the Prandtl number. Okay. Why does that matter? Well, it matters because it makes life a lot easier. Okay. Look at the way that you might think uh, the function for a convection uh, coefficient would work. Like if we look down here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight variables there, right? All of those are going to affect the convection uh, coefficient in some way, the thermal the conductivity of the fluid, the density, uh, the characteristic length, uh, viscosity, all of those things go into um, that one number, uh, H, right? And so if we wanted to try and understand, say, flow over a sphere in a set of different conditions, right, different velocities and sizes of the sphere and so forth, um, different temperature differences, uh, we would have to do a bunch of tests, right? If we wanted to test five valuables, five values for each variable. So let's say for specific heat, I was going to use five different specific heats and then five different densities. And I wanted to test and see how all of that worked. I would have to do five to the eighth trials, uh, whether those were experimental trials or computational trials, that's going to make a heck of a bunch of trials, half a million of them. <laughs> that's just not very, uh, that's just not very doable. Um, if instead we think of this as uh, a two variable function, as a function of the Reynolds number and the Prandtl number, we could cover those same situations in just 25 uh, trials, which is pretty insanely different. And so you can see why scaling matters here, right? So all of those variables uh, that you see down listed at the bottom of the page down here play some part in Reynolds and Prandtl, um, but uh, we can sort of uh, move them into those two numbers so that the relationships between them are encapsulated in the Reynolds number and the Prandtl number. Um, and it turns out that that's good enough uh, to give us uh, good predictions about how an, a particular situation works. So yay for the uh, for the Nusselt number. So why is the Nusselt number just a function of these two parameters? Why do they depend so much on the Reynolds number uh, and the Prandtl number? Uh, it's because the effectiveness of convection depends on uh, two particular ratios. One is the ratio of inertial forces to viscous forces. In other words, how much um, things are moving, mass is moving, versus how much resistance there is to that movement. Um, and if you have a high ratio of inertial to viscous forces, you're going to be, uh, your flow is going to be violent, right? It's going to be moving fluids around very quickly from space to space, uh, and that is going to increase the effectiveness of convection. And so one of the ways we can think of that is it's convection is throwing those packets of fluid against uh, a hot surface if it's a cold fluid. Uh, and the Reynolds number tells us how violently uh, that's actually happening. 
The Prandtl number is the ratio of momentum diffusivity. Uh, that is how quickly um, uh, inertia in the fluid spreads out to other parts of the fluid over thermal diffusivity, which tells us how fast uh, thermal energy moves by conduction through, uh, through the fluid. And if we have a high ratio there, it means that um, the temperature differences in the fluid are not being minimized or washed out by thermal conductivity. Um, if we have a lot of thermal diffusivity in our flow, we're not going to have big temperature differences. And so fl throwing fluid violently against the surface isn't going to be very effective because the temperature differences between the fluid next to the surface and the fluid away from the surface is not going to be very high. And so a uh, little Prandtl man here tells us um, that he, the Prandtl tells us uh, how quickly those temperature differences are going to be washed out. Um, so if we have violent convection and we have big temperature differences within the fluid, uh, then we're going to have a high Nusselt number. Convection is going to be effective. When we want to actually solve a problem uh, with the Nusselt number, we'll follow a standard uh, set of steps. And this is for internal flow as well as external flow. So we're kind of pulling two uh, topics in here together which is nice. <laughs> uh, one, we identify what geometry, right? So we're going to have a, a set of um, uh, definitions for a different Nusselt number. So this table gives us uh, the Nusselt number for internal flow through a circular tube with a constant temp, with a constant flex, internal flow with a squared tube with a constant temp or a constant flux. And so we have to identify which of those geometries fit. Sometimes it's not going to be an exact geometry, uh, but we might say, oh, well, this is kind of like flow over a sphere, uh, and we'll use that Nusselt number. So we identify what our category is. We identify the appropriate reference temperature. So we're going to have to figure out, in order to know our fluid uh, properties, which depend a lot upon uh, the temperature of the fluid, we have to find a, a kind of average temperature in our uh, in our situation. Uh, and then we find our Nusselt number, and that's what this table here is for. And you should know that this is a really limited uh, table of correlation equations. There are a ton of these. Some of them uh, designed to be super accurate uh, and get really complex and sort of dirty, um, and some that are meant to be um, sort of idealized and give us a general idea. These are more the idealized and general idea form of those equations. But you can check out a heat transfer textbook and read pages and pages of these things. Um, we're just going for like, what, what are we doing? Once you know how to do these problems, you can always look up uh, the correlation equation. And then finally, we use that Nusselt number to find our convection coefficient, uh, H, and that allows us to solve for everything else. We can find our fluxes, our heat rates, our changes over time, and so forth. Okay, so that's how, uh, that's our basic introduction uh, to a Nusselt number, um, and that's the end of this video.